I really want to ride this thing today, but instead I got to get to work on a Tesla Model S and I'm going to be changing out the rear brake pads. The customer stated that the shop they took it to said the fronts had 50% of pad left on them and that the rears had 15% brake pad life left on them. Anyways, we're going to check that out. So let me pull it in the shop now. Look at my watcher. Buddy. He stands there and watches me work. All right, let's check these brakes out. That looks like a lot of pad life left. It's hard to tell without taking the wheel off, but that looks pretty good. The backs look a little worse. There's a pretty serious edge on the rotor. So let's, let's look at that. Okay. So I'm going to take this wheel off, take a look at the brake pads, measure them out, measure out the calipers and see where we're at. I put that wheel chalk underneath the front wheels to keep the car from rolling backwards for some fluke accident. And you jack her up. All right, so this is the cover. These go over each lug nuts here. So all it is is a little plastic cover and then it has this lip on it. So there's a tool that you gotta use to take them off. So let me show you that now. So this is the little tool I use. Basically all it is is a little C-clip with two little ridges on the back side. So you just take it, stick it in, pull them out. I had a little plastic one too. I think I like this one better. Cause this one you need to just kind of put it in, pull it out. That's how easy they come out. Now I gotta take the lug nuts off. Those are all pretty hard. And I wonder, some of you watching in the comment, let me know. This is a uh, torque stick. And I don't know if it's similar to like a torque wrench where you're only supposed to use it in one direction. I could probably look it up, but I bet you guys will let me know. Is it okay to use it in reverse? I've done it for years. I don't know if it messes up the actual integrity of it or not. I don't even know how to, I don't even really fully understand how it works to begin with. It's a piece of metal. I mean, it's close to the wear bar. Let me show you. All right, so we'll go down inside of here. So you can see there's the, uh, the screecher and that's what pad life you have on there. So it's due. If you're super frugal, you could have gone a little bit longer. So we'll do both rears now. All right, so now we're gonna get in here and undo these two bolts back here and take our pads out. The 14. All right, there's the two bolts right there. So now the caliper is loose. So now we're gonna go put it into tow mode so that it releases that e-brake to get that off of there. Got it in tow mode. So now it's in neutral. So the parking brake is released. Shut that door so it stops it dinging at me. Now we'll test it to make sure it is in neutral by spinning that rear wheel. Okay, it is in fact in neutral. So now what you can do is kind of just pull on this to push some of the brake fluid back into the master cylinder, just like that. And it kind of just loosen it right up. We are. I'm gonna set it right here on top, just like that. So here's our brake pads. Slide them out of there. And yeah, I mean, they're worn, but again, I've seen worse. Still a decent amount of pad left on the back side there, as you can see. Let's get it compared to a new one. These are the new ones from Real Deal EV. Part number is 10550660-0-B. So let's open these up. So in comparison here, as you can see, the new one is much thicker than the old one, but I wouldn't say it was at 15% compared to what it was at. I'd probably give it a 50%, about 50% of it's gone. Let's get these bad rides thrown in there. Take these back pads out. There you have it. Okay, now we're all set up here. I got the rear pads pulled off. Now I need to clean off the rear pad slides on both sides here and then install the new pads. All right, so this is what Tesla recommends, the ceramic 
So I put this on the uh, back of the pads and then on the slides themselves. Anyways, you can get this on the website, uh, offer it in a syringe so you don't have to buy the whole thing. Make sure you're using this in a well ventilated area. Oh, I haven't even opened this one. Brand new, look at there. I must have another one, I know I use them. All right, here it is. So here's the Silleramic, and then I sell it in the syringe. This is a syringe, I had a syringe of it. Uh, it's number three from the website. So all I'm gonna do is apply this to the sli the guides, the slides. This is a light coat of film on them. You just don't want your brakes squeaking, you know? That'd be the worst. Got this silent car and then it comes up. I like to apply it to the actual piston here. And then just a light coat on the back. So you wanna make sure you get the back really good and then also the front. I'm gonna get the front really good. Just kidding. You don't do the front. I've had some uh, I've had some customers state other things that I'm like, are you serious right now? So now, I'm ready to put these bad boys in. Make sure you don't touch the front of the pad themselves. I'm trying not to block your view. I can't really see where I'm going. All right, so that one's on now. So both those pads are in place. So now the problem that we're gonna have is the the caliper is gonna be too close together because basically that that brake fluid that's in the master cylinder. So the master cylinder has brake brake fluid sitting in it, has brake fluid sitting in it, and so when the pads leave, you have to fill that with fluid. And so basically what I gotta do is open up the master cylinder cap. So I'm gonna pop the front, open up that master cylinder cap, and then I'm gonna push the brake piston back into the brake caliper to allow for this bigger space that we now have to fill. Hopefully no fluid has to come out of the master cylinder. Hopefully he hasn't filled it up. It's just really low. Um, so I'm gonna go do that now. Guess I need to show you guys this part. All right, so for this, all you're gonna do, simply pull this off. Put it off to the side and then you got your brake fluid right here. Let's take a look at it so you can see what we're working with here. So as you can see, sorry about the beeping. It's almost at its max level. It's right about here. So we're gonna push this up. It'll increase and it'll come up and almost out of there. So this is the one I've always used for years. This is made by Blue Point. You don't necessarily need this. You can get away with not having to have one, um, but basically what it'll do, it'll go in between. It almost looks like a brake pad. It goes in there and you just use it and it spreads it open. So you just squeeze it and it's pushing the caliper. It's pushing the piston back into that caliper right now. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna release this parking brake and I'm gonna manipulate it with 12 volts so that I can get the parking brake to go back into it. To do that, we're going to take this assembly out of here. And then on the brake pad itself, there is a, a red clip right here. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna get your finger underneath of it and kind of just push it, push it up and that'll release this tab so you can slide it forward. All right, so you just gotta slide it up and then you're gonna push this button right here and it'll disconnect it. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, there's two plugs inside of here. So all I'm gonna do here is it really doesn't matter if you go 12 volts one way or 12 volts the other way, it's either gonna put it in or put it out. So it doesn't really matter. You'll figure it out real quick which way you want it to go. So all I got is my 12 volts here. I'm gonna put it in. I'm just gonna touch the pieces. So you can hear the motor moving. All right, so now it's loosening up. So I'm gonna put some more tension on this. You can see it's spreading. So I'm gonna keep that same orientation. Okay, so now it's just about all the way spread open. So I'm gonna leave that there for now. That should do it. I'll even go so far as to go ahead and hook the plug up now until you hear it click and then you're gonna slide the little red tab back over it. Now to get the caliper back in, you're gonna kind of go out and around this bolt here. There we are, just like that and slide it. So here in about 20 seconds, my phone dies, unfortunately. So 
I'm going to explain to you what you have to do. So basically you're going to slide this caliper back on. You're going to put your two bolts back in. You're going to set your parking brake and then you're going to check your fluid levels. And then finally you're going to take it out and do a brake burnishing. After the brake burnishing is all done, then that's it. Have yourself a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching and have a good one.